Hey everyone, Professor Justin here, and this video is going to be about identifying the sources in our images, so in order to do differential photometry. In particular, I'm going to focus on the idea that sometimes our, our images that we get from my telescope are actually tilted with respect to the images that we need to um, we need to compare with. So if the two images are rotated or flipped around, it's really hard to identify what stars are what in the image, and therefore we can't actually do differential photometry unless we identify what our source is and what our uh, comparison stars are. So uh, I'm going to take a set of data, which I know has this problem and go through the entire process of how to fix it so you can actually identify the source. Now, you don't always have to do this, but it I think it really can be, especially if you're, it's your first couple sources, it's really hard if the images are tilted with respect to the thing you're looking at. So I'm going to try to go through and show you how to fix that. Um, it's not incredibly easy, but it's not that bad. So first of all, the source I have, I'm going to be looking at is T pi x. Um, this is a cataclysmic variable star images we took during the summer of 2023. Uh, so first, I'm just going to open up some of those images. So here's what they look like. I'm going to open all of them so I can do the, you can see that they don't have any WCS. So the first thing I have to do is get a WCS for them. Uh, so the way to do that is you just open the file on the folder they're in. I've named them all so that they'll all be picked up no matter what. There's eight of them. Uh, cool. So I'm not putting in any filters or anything. Um, open them up. Okay. One of eight. Uh, you can see that they're they're all there. I got like a spaceship that's going to go through the image right there. That's interesting. I might have to chuck that one. I'm not sure. Um, but let's see what the basic problem is first. So I want to figure out what in this image is the actual star that I want to determine the brightness of. Most of these are going to be not the star, obviously, because there's only one of them. It's generally in the center somewhere because I telescope is really good at finding it being centered on the source, but I don't have any idea where it is. Uh, you can see without the WCS, uh, there are no RA and DEC. There's no coordinates here. So, uh, so, so in fact... Um, the computer also doesn't know where this image is. So there's nothing I can do basically short of looking at um, a picture to determine what the source is. So I'm going to first try to do that. This is on the AAVSO website. You can log in and get a, get a credential if you want, but actually it's a thing I need to do. You don't actually have to log in to do. So it turns out that uh, you can just type in the name of the star that you want in this case, so TPYX. Now, because TPYX is a known CV star, you can do that. But I wanted to show you how to do that if you don't have the source name. This is typical for our supernova sources that are not named yet. They are just random sources out there. Those things typically you can't just type in like this. So I'm actually going to go to the tools and observer resources. And then I'm going to go to VSP. So VSP is the tool that we need, the variable star plotter. And there is where I'm going to put the name TPYX. It's going to be found because it is a known star. Um, and then I just want to go through a couple of the other options. So the chart scale, basically, you want either 30 or 60 normally. 30 is about the size of the cameras that we use, both on the eye telescope system and at Mendel. So uh, basically, you want to pick E, the 30 arc minute. And typically, you want to click CCD. Now, there's reasons to click the other two um, if you want a different chart orientation. But I typically go with the CCD. Um, the click plot, plot chart. I just want to point out this chart ID right here. I'm going to tell you how to get that information in a second, um, but I'm just going to plot the chart at the moment. <clears throat> Okay, and there's our chart. So the idea is that this star field is the exact same as this star field, but how in the heck are we supposed to tell which star is which? Now, I'm really practiced at this, so actually I can already tell sort of which star we want to look at. Like this bright star is almost guaranteed to be that bright star. So I could maybe figure out like this three star pattern is maybe that three star pattern. And then the X with the dot in the middle, that's where the actual CV source is. So I could maybe do this without having to do this next calibration. But if you've never looked at a star field like this, I'm sure you're going to be totally confused. So the problem is that the orientation here, there's a north there and there's an east there. So clearly this is oriented, but the picture is not oriented. Actually, I kind of think that north is that way and east is that that way and notice that's how that's not correct in the little diagram that after Ms. J is showing me so it's trying to tell me something but I think it's actually not correct we shouldn't expect it to be right if it doesn't have a WCS the WCS is the way that it knows what direction is which so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put a WCS on this thing so that's just going to be a plate solve make sure the options are reasonable meaning really you don't want this bottom level to be selected unless you really know where the source is 
Uh, I've found sometimes that the limit ma max peaks help. So I have that checked, but for the most part, uh, skip the images with WCS auto save. Yeah. Make sure this is all working. I'm going to push start and then step away from the computer. Cause it's going to be a few minutes and then I'll fast forward it anyway. Okay. So you can see the plates all finished. We've got all the information in the log here. Um, let's go back over here and check to see if I agree with how the thing is lined up where north is up and east is that way. See, it's see, I don't, I just don't agree because now north and east is here, north, up, east. So it's aligned in the same way that the um, AAVSO chart is showing us. And I just don't see where these patterns are. So I'm going to think that maybe you have to reopen it. Oh, actually, yeah, look, it says no W, it says no WCS right there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to reopen those eight images. I really thought that it would be there, but yeah, okay, so now, cool. So now there's WCS, it tells you what kind of WCS it is. Let me, it, it said they all worked. So even the one with the line through it, even picked up a WCS, cool. But see the north and the east, they are not lined up correctly. Um, you know, on the CCD, west and east are flipped. So it doesn't go east over there and west over there. It goes the other way. But you can see here, north and east are actually the correct orientation, meaning east is left of north, but they're tilted, right? They're rotated. So the problem is that I want to get the rotation fixed so I can compare the star images. And the issue is that uh, probably Astronomers J is not going to let me get to the right rotation. So for instance, right now I have invert Y. So you'd think that if I like uh, got rid of it, invert Y would put East up. Indeed, it did that, but that's actually completely the wrong orientation and the and the rotation is wrong. So that is not good. Um, let's invert X. You'd think that would switch the North to the other side. Okay, good. Now we're back to the right orientation, but still rotated because North is uh, to the right instead of up. Um, let's try again by doing inverting both. That would put east down and north to the right. Uh, sorry, that's relative to the first time. So now I have north to the right and east down. Again, this is the wrong orientation and rotated. So none, none of those helped. So you'd like to be able to do the following thing. You'd like to do 180 degrees rotation. And now go through the same process and try to get them into the right orientation. So that would be, uh, for instance, I want to go east down and then rotate. So I want, I mean, we can just go through that. Invert none, no, north and east are in the wrong direction. Invert X. Now they're oriented correctly, but not rotated correctly. Now they are probably, again, they are oriented correctly, but not rotated correctly. And there's nothing I can do. And that is oriented incorrectly and rotated. So there's nothing, none of the options. In fact, even if I get rid of the auto, auto, I still don't have any way of getting north up and east left, right? So that is very frustrating. Just going to check it. Those were all the options Astro MSJ gives me. So super annoying. Well, there is a fix for this. You can actually take the whole image and rotate it using a processing trick. Um, the issue is that you have to redo the WCS. It destroys the WCS. So basically, if you do this process, this will no longer be correct. So you have to remake the WCS. So that is what I'm going to show you um, how to do. First, I'm just going to make sure that I get it in the simplest possible way. OK, that's the simplest possible thing I can do, because right now, the north and east are oriented correctly, meaning uh, east is less left of north, right? It, it's, you know, east is counterclockwise from north. And that's the same thing that's happening on this image. East is counterclockwise from north. Okay. So what I want to do is if I could rotate this nine degrees to the left, it would be right. Because if I take this little image here, rotate it nine degrees to the left, it would be north up, east left. Cool. The way you do that is you go to the main astro image window, this window right here, go to image, uh, and then do transform, then rotate 90 degrees to the left. And so that's going to do the rotation, but then the WCS is going to be all screwed up, so you have to remake it. So rotate 90 degrees to the left. You can see they're all weird now. They're because they were rotated to the left. And you can see that the thing actually is not showing us the right thing. It's showing us rotate at 180 degrees, right? So, okay, that's frustrating. But that's why we need to remake the WCS. So now I go back up here, do plate solve. 
Now I have to be super careful. I have to get rid of the skip images because I want the images with the WCS to be remade. If I put skip images, they'll skip over them, right? It's, the WCS is wrong right now. I want them to be fixed. So anyway, uncheck that, click start, and hopefully this will work. So I'm going to, again, take a break, come back when this is finished. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the plate solve looks like it finished. So and now we're going to see if this worked. So again, I think I have to reopen it. I am not, although look at the orientation right now. That actually looks pretty good to me. Um, but let's reopen it just to make sure because that seemed to be something I had to do before. Uh, every setting should be fine. Match files eight. Yeah, it looks like the right number of things. It's a little bit weird that it's still rotated sideways like that. Um, but you can see that the north and the east are now not only oriented correctly, but now actually have the right um, uh, rotation as well. Um, this image is a little bit strange, so I, I, I'll show you what I what uh, how this how I say this has worked. Uh, I also think that I might get a smaller image to act if I was actually going to identify the stars in this image. But if I zoom in now. You can zoom in here too. Yeah, you can now see that this is definitely the bright star. And then I do have this nice little, so it, they're called um, asterisms, right? And you know, patterns in the sky that let you identify which stars are which. So I have this nice little, I don't know, it's kind of a question mark where you have like these three stars and then the star there with this one at the base there. So I actually have those three stars there with that one and that star at the base there. So normally what I do is I try to identify those like little patterns. And if I see, if I think I've got it, then I go, oh, okay, let's see if I can find other stars that match the pattern. I have another star right here, which is kind of right across forming a long diamond with those three stars. One, two, three, long diamond star right there. Cool. Um, anything else? Look for double stars because double stars are very, they're not super unusual, but they're, um, they can help you identify things in the image. If you find a double star, uh, then you can tell you that you're at the right place. Uh, actually, nothing really jumps out to me as far as double stars. So uh, looks like way up here, I might, yeah. So way up here, you can actually see that pattern right there, bright star and two double stars, but that's kind of far away from my source. So the source is that X right there. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is one, two, three, and then continue to the source. One, two, three, and then continue to the source. It's like one of these super dim objects. Um, I'm going to just to show you how you can get different uh, scales for the chart. First of all, note the chart number up here. That's the code you can type in um, to reproduce this exact chart. But what I want to do is I think I want to go one step smaller than this because it is in kind of a zoomed in region. So I'm going to go to plot another chart. And then I'm going to pick a chart scale of one smaller of chart scale F. Which would, which would be half the size. That chart ID right there is where you could type in that ID and reproduce the exact same chart you just had. Um, is this working? Yes, it is, it is going. Okay. Okay, and now, now you're, that we're zoomed in, I can see a little bit better. Bright star, dim star, those, that three triangle is right there that star right there. And you can even see that guy's got these two buddies right next to him right there and there. So clearly I am looking at the right thing. Um, I can see the triangle. I can see that one, four, three. That's clearly that guy right there. So this is a little tricky, but definitely it's one of those two stars is my source. I might consider even zooming in one more to make sure that I have identified which of those two stars it actually is. This one is actually a the source is a little trickier than I was anticipating finding. It must be very, very dim. Because, I mean, I know it's one of those two dim stars, but I don't know which one. Is that maybe even a little too small? No, it does tell me what I need. So it doesn't have the bright star in it anymore. It just has that little asteritism right there, 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 and there. So now I go... Okay, there's my little triangle. Go over. The source is right there. Below it, there's another star. So that means that's my source, and below it is another star. You can even see that it's saying there's a magnitude 17 star right there. That's like right there. So you can just barely pick that one out. So anyway, that right there, that's my source. And I have all this these stars that I can use as comparison stars. Um, so clearly, T pi x is just a very dim source. I didn't remember that when I started doing this um, for this video, but fine. We still located it. So um, I, I hope that's good enough. So the, the key trick is you want to make sure your 
um, your cardinal directions are lined up in your image and in the finder chart. And they are they are frequently lined up and you don't have to do any of this trickery. Sometimes they are not. So when you put the WCS on it, you have to rotate the image to get it. So, you know, you predict what the rotation is going to be. You have to see, I said, oh, left 90 degrees will get me my north and east into the right orientations. Then I had to do that using this part up here, um, the sort of main Astro Image J window. That was image transform. And then once I did that, I had to put the WCS back on it. And then I had to reopen them. And then I got to the actual correct orientation. Then it was relatively easy to get the stars. Now, you don't always have to do this. Sometimes when you get good at it, you can do this without doing the rotation. You can just figure out what star it is. And typically, all your images are rotated the same. So you can identify in one rotation. You can usually see in the other ones. But here's how you actually get the real the real answer there. Um, I'll put the link down to the forum where I found this solution. Um, it was by the developer. So they have no plans of fixing this in future versions of Astro MSJ. I think this is the established way of doing it. Um, anyway, that's going on too long. So thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful to show you how to rotate your images to actually get the orientations correct on something like a chart from AABSO. Great. Thanks very much. And I'll see you guys next time.